Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to be asking the question, what is economic growth? Here's the economic cycle diagram for the UK economy since 2006. You can see that in 2008 and in 2009, the British economy experienced a recession. Indeed, over the two years, output fell quite substantially. Since then, the economy has grown every year. But look at the annual rate of growth. It's about 2-2.5% two, two per year. So perhaps that is the, the trend growth rate for the UK economy. Of course, other countries grow much more quickly. That's partly because of the stage of their economic development. But uh, take a look at this chart, which shows the IMF's forecast for the fastest growing economies in the world in 2015. And there are some pretty staggering growth rates there in excess of 7% per year. China would have been in this chart in 2014, but as you know, China at the moment is experiencing a relative economic slowdown. Anyway, in this topic video, we're just going to briefly look at what is economic growth and what are the key factors that drive the growth rate of uh, developed and developing countries. I think the best definition of economic growth is this one that growth is a long-term expansion of a country's productive potential. However, we can make a distinction between short-term economic growth, growth of real national output in the near term, and long-term economic growth, which, as I've said, is the increase in the trend or the potential national output. And that's oftentimes shown by an outward shift of a country's long-run aggregate supply curve. So in this video, we'll make, it, we'll make a distinction between short-term and long-term growth. Now, short-term economic growth is essentially cyclical in nature. So that means it's changes in national output brought about by shifts in aggregate demand and various components, so, so consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. It's also brought about by changes in short-run aggregate supply factors, in particular unit wage costs and other resource costs. We also know that the, the short-term growth of an economy is susceptible or vulnerable to external shocks affecting both aggregate demand and supply. And it's also influenced and shaped by policy changes in the short term. For example, movements in interest rates set by a nation's central bank. But essentially, short-term economic growth is cyclical. Whereas, long-run economic growth is essentially supply-side driven or structural in nature. And that's quite an important distinction to make. As we'll see in a few minutes, long-run growth is essentially driven by a country's productivity performance, by whether or not a nation is on the cutting edge of the technological frontier, by the strength of their business cultures, uh, by changes in the size of the active labour force, and also by factors such as the, the rate of capital investment. So, this slide's a key one. Short-term growth is mainly cyclical, not exclusively, but mainly cyclical. Long-term growth is mainly supply-side driven. What are the key factors affecting short-term growth? We've mentioned them already, but this slide will provide a handy summary. So, for example, the state of monetary policy will, will have a bearing. The level of interest rates set by the central bank and, and other measures, such as quantitative easing. Fiscal policy decisions by the government, how much they're spending, how much they're taking in in tax, and, of course, the size of their budget deficit. Short-term factors such as the, the cost of oil and foodstuffs affecting aggregate supply. The exchange rate also has a bearing on short-term growth, in particular because it affects the, the price competitiveness of export industries. And one country's short-term cyclical growth is clearly influenced by the state of the economy of their major trading partners. Fundamentally, in the short term, the, the rate of economic growth is determined by the, the animal spirits or the confidence of both businesses and households. So when businesses become more optimistic, they tend to hire more people, 
buy in more raw materials and components, and of course, expand their output. Conversely, when household confidence takes a hit, people save more and spend less, and therefore the short-term growth of the economy will, will slow down. So these are some factors affecting short-term economic growth. One way we can look at the short-term analysis is by using ADAS. In my diagram here, I've just shown an increase or an outward shift in aggregate demand, for example, brought about by a rise in exports. And that would be a short-term fillip to the, the rate of growth of GDP. Now, long-term growth, the productive potential of an economy. Here are the key factors influencing the, the trend growth rate in the long term. Crucially, we need investment. We need investment in new capital goods, factories, buildings, machinery, toolkits, and also, crucially, critical infrastructure in power, in telecoms, in water, in transport. Long-term growth is also essentially driven by the, the progress the country makes in lifting their labour and capital productivity. And also it's affected by the size of the active labour force. And here are three other factors that are important for long-term economic growth. The scale of investment in research and development. And that's linked to the pace at which businesses achieve product and process innovation. And increasingly, people are now recognising the importance of the enterprise agenda. Whether a country, for example, has a critical mass of business startups. And following on from that, whether those startup businesses are able to scale up successfully and become competitive, not just in their own markets, but uh, internationally. Do you see the difference here between the short term factors we mentioned, interest rates, exchange rates, government spending? and the long-term factors shown in this slide, investment, productivity, innovation. If you're making a distinction between short-term and long-term growth, you're in a good situation with your economic analysis. So we can show economic growth uh, using a PPF. If you have successful, effective supply-side policies, that can help to bring about an outward shift of the PPF, there's our initial one, PPF1 and successful supply side policies, economic reforms can bring about an outward shift of the production possibility frontier. And that allows, of course, a country to increase their supply of both consumer and capital goods. So that would be a neat way of showing long term growth using a PPF diagram. And we could also show long term growth using aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So here's an initial position. If we can achieve a, an expansion in a country's productive potential, then we can shift our long run aggregate supply curve to the right. In other words, the potential output of the economy has increased. And that allows, for example, the country to shift its aggregate demand curve a little bit to the right. It may actually shift all the way to YP2. It means that the economy has the productive capacity to be able to meet a higher level of demand. So in this video, we have looked at what is economic growth. And in particular, we've made a distinction between short term and long term factors affecting the growth of an economy. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again on another topic video.